Next up is the hot cue section. And that's located right here. You have your hot cue bank and you can set up to three hot cues, A, B, and C. And these are great because you can trigger them instantly and there's no lag time or latency. When you're doing it on the fly, it'll just hit immediately and the, the hot cue will start playing from that point. Whereas here, there's a bit of a lag time or it stops the track entirely, depending on what setting you're in. Uh, but here you can select one of three and when they're not illuminated, that means nothing's active. Now you can set these things ahead of time in record box or you can do it on the fly. But if you do set them ahead of time in record box or, or even ahead of time on your CDJ, you're gonna have to recall them each time you load a new track because it, it remembers what you did on the last track, if anything. So right now there's nothing on the last track that we played, so it's not doing anything. On one hand, it's kind of annoying because you have to keep loading it, but on the every time you load a track, you have to recall the hot cues. But on the other hand, it's kind of cool because you can actually trigger a hot cue in different songs and jump between songs. So I'll show you that as well. But first, let's set some hot cues. First, we wanna exit this loop, just so that we're fresh and it's not looping while we're trying to do this. And you can either do it while the track is playing or you can do it while it's paused. So let's find a good place. Okay, so there's my place. And I have my spot right there. So I'm gonna hit record and that illuminates them in red. So that shows me that there's no hot cues recorded on here, but it's in record mode. I'm gonna hit the A button and it starts to flash. And you'll notice here, it sets up a little A on both sides. So it's showing me hot cue A. And then to get out of that, I hit call again. And now the A is green. So that tells me that I have a hot cue set on A. So now if I play it and I hit A, it's gonna jump right back. Even if it's super far away, it'll instantly jump right back. So that's pretty cool. And you can set up to three hot cues on there. Also, even if the CDJ is paused, so now it's not even playing, if I hit the A, it's gonna start right back up again. So that's also cool. Now, if we had made these previously in record box and pulled up this track, we would only see the hot cues on the top line, but we wouldn't see it on the bottom line as active. And these would all be blank right here, these buttons. So in order to call that back up, we would have to hit call, and then we'd have to hit all three buttons to call up the hot cues associated with that button for this track. But this is already loaded, so even if I go to another track and jump back to this track, it's already saved in, in the memory on, on this right now because we've already set it and played it live and it's been active, so it's, it's already good to go. Now, say I set another hot cue point, so we're gonna do this, we're gonna do it while it's playing and I'm gonna hit record, and then hit record again. Now I set B again, I can trigger it, and I can trigger A. But if I hit record again, it turns them all red. If I hit B again, it's gonna record a new hot cue point in a different place. So you wanna make sure you always hit record again after you set your hot cue. right? Because I'm now setting a new point every time I hit it. And I'm not triggering the last one I set. So now I hit record again or record call again, and I hit B. And now that's the last one I set. And we'll do C. So that's how you set hot cues. Now let's do some hot cue loops. So for here, your hot cues are all in green. When you set a hot cue loop, it's gonna turn orange and that's how you know the difference. So first we have to set a loop. 
So I'm gonna scroll a little further to get in a different area. And we're gonna set our loop first with the in and out. And then we're gonna hit record and we're gonna hit a button. So we'll hit C um, to record the hot Q loop. And then we'll hit record again to save it. So let's do that. So now we have our loop. We're gonna hit record and it lights them up all red again. I'm gonna hit C and hit record again. And now it turned orange because it's a hot Q loop. So if we jump back to hot Q A and then B, it's gonna just keep playing, right? Because these are normal hot cues. And then we go to C and it's gonna loop. Pretty cool, huh? The last thing I'm gonna show you with this is how to set up hot cues or hot cue loops on different tracks and then trigger different tracks. So we have a few set here, so we'll leave those. And we're just gonna uh, deal, we'll leave C since that's our little loop that we set up. And now we're gonna go to a different track. We'll go to Monster. And we're gonna select that and it loaded it. And then we're gonna hit play and we're gonna set a hot cue. So I'll just set it, I'm gonna hit record and then C, A, B, and C. I don't wanna hit C because I wanna save that one. But I'll hit A and record again. And now we have a hot cue on that track. And then let's go to a third track. Go to I want that beat. And then without even, I'm not even gonna let it play. I'm just gonna set up the cue point right at the beginning. So we're gonna go record and B. And then record again. And remember when you hit it, it starts playing by the way. So now we have three hot cues set up on three different tracks. So now I can trigger all three tracks at whatever way I wanna trigger them by doing this. Wow, that's pretty crazy, right? And there's so many things you can do with that. But that's about it. I mean, I can't believe we made it all the way through the CDJ. This is a lot of functions beginning to advance, but that's all the features that have to do with the CDJ. And remember, don't forget to work on your mixing skills first before you get to these advanced features. In another video series, I'm gonna take you through the record box software, just the basics. Uh, so that you can prepare your tracks if you're using the USB or the SD card. But if you're only using CDs and you don't wanna mess with the record box software, just jump to the next video where I describe the DJ mixer. And in that video, I'm actually describing it with two turntables, but don't let that sway you because it's all about the mixer. It has nothing to do with the decks. So let's get to it.